What's going on you guys? Thanks for tuning in for another episode of JB Trickle RC. Um, I know this isn't my normal uh, intro style. Uh, just got back from vacation, unfortunately come into the door and uh, found out that uh, our home AC uh, went out while we were going on vacation. So my normal spot where I film, uh, got a window unit in that window just to get us by, waiting on the repair guy to get out here to fix everything. So uh, new intro style. So that's the rundown on that. But guys, I wanna let you know, I uh, got a special video for you coming up today. And a huge shout out to uh, my good friend Scott over at RC Terminator here on YouTube. I'll be sure to link his channel in the description of this video. Uh, Scott's a cool guy. I talked to him several times through Facebook Messenger, talked to him uh, through YouTube and things of that nature. Real cool guy. He does a lot of RC stuff as well. He does a lot of reviews, some crawling, some builds, drag racing. He does a little bit of everything too. Um, but, um, you know, different than my channel as well. So, or stop by, give Scott's channel a look, uh, spread some love, give him some support. And um, uh, what this video is, is a painting tutorial video of a body that I had just kind of sitting around. Um, it's a, uh, the Axial um, SCX-10, I forgot what the name of the body was. It's, well, it's their, their factory honcho body, but it's like a Toyota Tacoma. It's not officially licensed, I don't think, but you can tell that's what it is. I had one sitting there and I was like, man, what, what can I do with this? What, what can I make of this body? I'm not gonna use it. I've got a 66 F100. I'm gonna be putting on my honcho. That episode will be coming in the future. And I got to thinking, I was like, you know, let's do something for another YouTube channel and um, send something off to their way. So Scott has no, Scott knows something is coming because um, I've already reached out to him to get his address because as I'm filming this intro, I um, got everything set up to ship to him. So he knows something's coming, but he has no clue what it is. Um, so in this tutorial video, I'm going to show you some of my painting methods. Um, a couple things, uh, so, so, something a little different than my previous video. Yes, there's some more realistic flames. I know I covered that in another video, but there's a couple other techniques in here that we uh, that I'm gonna cover that I didn't cover in that specific video. And uh, I just want you to know too, if you see anything in this painting tutorial video or if there's something else you'd like to know more about for our uh, painting RC bodies, let me know in the comment section. Um, if you want me to cover something more specific, I'll be glad to do so in the future. So uh, please, you know, use the comment section, give me some feedback, let me know what you'd like to see, and I'll try to cover that in the future as well. But again, this video, his, uh, his channel is uh, called RC Terminator, and uh, he's got uh, really cool, like the Terminator uh, skull as part of his logo. So that's what I wanna do. That's one thing I've always enjoyed doing. Some of you guys seen some of my bodies I paint in the past. Did the Ghostbusters Halloween Havoc body for last year, did a Superman body recently on one of my new cars that I think you've seen in a, an episode or two. Um, I've done several others, several that I hadn't even shown on the channel. Uh, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you've seen some other theme bodies I've done in the past. But it's something I enjoy doing. So I figured RC Terminator, what a cool way. Let's do a Terminator body for Scott and let's send it to him on his channel. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take that standard axial honcho Toyota Tacoma style body put a custom RC Terminator YouTube channel paint scheme on there, and we're gonna send it to Scott. And, uh, and again, um, Scott, I hope you enjoy it. I uh, hope you put it to good use. I hope you like it. And um, I appreciate you, appreciate what your channel does um, as well. So, so again, hope you like it, buddy. But with all that said, guys, let's jump right into it. let's get to it so the first thing you're gonna have to do is um, we're gonna highlight all of the images this is after you got done uh, designing everything we're gonna flip those horizontally so what you're doing is you're actually mirror imaging your design work so that way whenever you apply these to the inside of the Lexan RC body it'll actually be showing the correct way whenever you paint it um, looking at it from the outside so if you're doing paint mask material and you're going from the inside you do have to mirror image it to make it appear the right way whenever we're looking at the body from the outside. So what we're doing here, we're just gonna get that set up. We got our design work done and everything, and we're gonna be sending it over to the uh, cutter here momentarily, uh, which we're getting ready to do now. And uh, again, well, I've talked about this in one of my other painting videos, but um, I do use a uh, Silhouette Cameo. 
Uh, that's my uh, cutting machine, and as far as my design work, I use the uh, proprietary uh, Silhouette Studios. Um, I use AutoCAD. Sometimes I use Adobe. Um, that's kind of what I do. Some of my design work in is in those three softwares. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and say, let's get these things cutting. And, uh, yeah, there we go. We're going to go ahead and start cutting the vinyl. And then we got to start the weeding process. And uh, what do I mean by weeding process? Well, you'll see that here in just a moment as well. Um, but the printer's got to go through the check, and now, now it's running. Now it's going to start cutting our uh, paint masks. And this is Avery paint masks, um, vinyl paint masking material. I prefer the white. They make a yellow. Um, for whatever reason, I feel like the white has the better adhesion on it. I'm not sure. But anyway, after they're done, there you go. You can see our uh, various designs. Um, it's kind of hard to tell um, in the camera here in the picture, um, you know, what we're actually looking at right now. But we're going to do some pre-weeding. And uh, uh, weeding means uh, pulling the, the vinyl portion that you don't need off. So like right now, I'm going to go ahead and take that outer portion of that Terminator uh, skeleton, and I'm going to start taking that the entire outer portion out of it. Now, I do recommend whenever you're doing this and you're looking at a piece as highly detailed as that Terminator skeleton, I recommend looking at the original image or original design, whatever. That way you can see what does need to be weeded in or out. And, and if you ever find yourself second-guessing yourself, I have done this before too, apply it to the body, turn the body right side up, and then start weeding it that way. Sometimes just looking at it, and the right direction can help with that process. But you can see the outline of the Terminator there. Um, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me weed out the entire uh, entire thing because there is a ton. So uh, right here we go. We got our uh, axial, um, it's kind of like a Toyota Tacoma body. I don't think it's officially licensed, but that's what it is. You know, there's pretty much no doubt in that. But I've already got all the window masking. I've got the headlights masks. And uh, we're masking the headlights and the grill because I'm going to paint the grill silver. And the headlights going to remain clear because we've actually got this really cool uh, 3D printed aftermarket um, grill and headlight bucket set. I um, can't remember right off the top of my head where I got these. Um, I will be sure to add that in the description of the video uh, and give uh, them a shout out. Uh, I just cannot remember off the top of my head right now while I'm doing the voiceover for this video. But we've already scuffed the body. Um, I wash and scuff every one of my bodies before I paint them. And uh, just going over some detail areas of where we're going to be adding some of those decals and things like that. If you want to know what I wash and scuff my bodies with, real simple. Uh, scotch bright pad and Dawn dish soap. Wash it, scuff it lightly. You don't, have to get, you don't have to get deep with it. You just want to get it scuffed up enough to help that paint adhere and uh, keep from flaking. So what we're going to do here, um, we've already got one of the, uh, the RC Terminator logos uh, fully weeded out. So I'm going to go ahead and show you part of my application process here. Um, I've just got some clear vinyl application tape. Um, and, uh, okay, yeah, I was just kind of uh, realigning an uh, uh, inside piece of one of the letters. I think like the inside of the A was wanting to pop out or something. So anyway, we're going to get that uh, transfer tape on there, and then I'm going to gently work it uh, and get the vinyl to stick to the tape while I'm peeling the uh, paper backer off of the vinyl. And again, this is paint masking material. This is not normal like white vinyl or anything like that. This is Avery paint masking material. You can get that several places online. Um, I've gotten mine off of Amazon. Um, but again, they do make it in yellow and white. But for whatever reason, white seems to adhere better. And it seems to hold on curves better. But that's my personal experience. So we're going to go ahead and get that lined up. And then we're going to get that applied. Because again, I'm not going to take you through the entire process. I mean, we... We'd, we'd, be, we'd have a video hour long just about prepping the body and, and getting everything cut and applied where you want it. So we're not going to drag through all that. I want to get through the painting process and talk about uh, various things with this body. So I'm going to go back over just to kind of you know run it in with my fingers, try to get it in there, make sure it's adhered really good to the body. Then I'm going to gently just pull that transfer tape right back off. And uh, if you're working with uh, vinyl masking like this and you got to go into an area that's got a bend or, or something like that, work it in. Uh, um, what I do, I don't lay it flat, kind of lay it flat in the flat area, take you a Sharpie marker cap or something and kind of work it into that little bend area and that way it'll adhere better. If you try to stick it on flat and then go back and put in your molds, it's just not going to work out very good. 
All right, and here you can see we got all of our um, designs um, applied to the body. So we're ready for the painting process now. I'm just going to kind of go around and show you how it's going to look and the kind of layout of the body. Got the Terminator uh, skeleton on the front end, got Arnold on the roof, Skynet on the sides. But uh, let me go find my paint and let's get that first coat on, shall we? back <laughs> all right so uh we found our paint and uh, take a look at that that terminator the t800 skeleton there uh, we got our first coat of paint on i didn't show the taping process i just taped around it on the outside and uh got it painted with the uh tamaya anodized aluminum silver i believe it's called i'll show you here in just a moment too the paint code in case you'd like to try it and i'll tell you why i like that paint then I backed it with black. Um, one reason why we do that is that actually gives that paint kind of a chrome look to it. It's not like a true bright chrome, um, like a polished aluminum, but not quite chrome. You know, that's that's a you know silver anodized aluminum, I believe is what it's called. Uh, here we go. Yeah, Tamiya PS48. And uh, I like this because I've never had problem with this color flaking. I've used some of the chromes before, even with prepping the body, sanding them getting them ready and all that different stuff I'd, i've had problem with some of the true chrome paints flaking i've never had this paint flake on me i'm not afraid to put that on the nose of a car or somewhere where it's going to get you know uh, essentially bashed on a lot um never had it never had this flake on me so uh, that's one reason why i like to use it for a lot of my chrome work um I, and i do about four light coats of it and then i back it with black and like i said it comes out you know chrome like you know polished aluminum definitely not a perfect chrome but um I'd rather deal with something not quite as chrome looking as I would than having something flaking over the time. If you've had good luck with some of the chrome paints, good for you. Um, I have in some instances, but most instances after a hit or two on the nose, it usually comes off. So I want to give you my rundown too on my airbrush setup uh, in, in the back there. I believe that is a, the Master Air um, airbrush compressor. I'm actually running one of my Master Air uh, airbrushes for this project. Um, I, 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 about, I, I use that for stuff that I don't have to do a lot of fine line detail work, and then I go to my Iwata Eclipse for some of my, my uh, finer detailing work. But for this one, we're good for that. But uh, kind of giving you a rundown on my setup there. And we're going to take that fluorescent orange, and we're going to lay some, uh, you know, something almost in the shape of flames on there. And we're going to do two, maybe three coats. And uh, this is my stencil set that I bought um, off Amazon. And this is the stencil set that I use to do some of my realistic flames with. And it comes with three different sizes of each stencil. You got a small, a medium, and a large. Um, so it's really good for the RC stuff. You can, um, whether you're doing a smaller area or larger area, uh, smaller areas being a little bit more difficult. But uh, I'm going to show you my method here uh, and how I apply this and what we do and how the black's going to cover it up and things of that nature here shortly. But. Now that you kind of see my setup and everything, and you know we went over the stencils, let's go ahead and start getting that paint mixed. We're going to take that fluorescent orange, get it mixed up, and uh, I use those little little cups there, um, and that's what I use to mix my paints in. Because um, sometimes with these paints, you do have to use the Proline um, uh, thinner or, or Proline uh, reducer with these Proline airbrush paints. Um, you can use other things. I know some people, and even myself in the past, I haven't with the Proline paints, but I used to use Fast Color a lot. Sometimes you'd thin those down with a little bit of Windex and even water. I've even thinned them down with water a little bit before in the past. But uh, the Proline compared to the uh, the Fast Color stuff uh, does tend to be thicker, and I've noticed that there's not they're not as consistent as far as their their levels of uh, thickness of the paint out of the bottle. So if you're gonna if you plan on using the Pro Line uh, airbrush paint, make sure you get some of that Pro Line reducer because you're going to need it. Um, at least in my opinion, Any, anything if you try to spray, you know, 85% of the different paints right out of the bottle, it's just gonna be too thick and not want to run through the airbrush. So I put some of that Pro Line reducer in, then I just mix it up with a popsicle stick. What's my mix ratio? I don't know. Uh, I go by eye. Um, I'll add a little bit and go back and add more if I need to, or if I go a little too thick on the reducer, I'll end up adding a little bit more paint. Uh, I try to go sparingly because it don't take a lot, you know. 
and I'm um, sorry I can't give you any mixing information, but just years of doing the, the airbrushing stuff, um, you just kind of learn <laughs> over time, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then you can look at the drip off the, the popsicle stick at the consistency or how it runs down the cup, and I know that that is ready to spray at the various pressures that I like to spray at. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get that fluorescent orange in the airbrush. And then, like I said, uh, sometimes I'll draw out kind of the rough outline of the flames that I want on the hood. Um, I didn't do it in this instance. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But again, I didn't do it here, but uh, that's okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take this uh, uh, body and get ready to lay those down. And I always recommend, I always do a test spray. I, I want to make sure that I'm spraying at the width that I want, the precision that I want, and make sure... You know, there's, uh, you know, no sputtering and things of that nature. So pretty much good here. Um, I'm ready to go. Um, but I do recommend doing that trick. Like I said, I find it to be um, helpful, you know, because it's always easier to test on something than to, to, than to go straight to the RC body and go, oh, man, something's not right here. And because uh, trust me, it has happened before. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just come off the shoulders of that Terminator. And uh, we're just kind of kind of go up, and I'm basically making almost something like a I don't know like a triangular pattern. I'm gonna come off the shoulder and go up and over around the side of the fender a little bit, or not down the side, but kind of beside it, on staying on the hood pretty much. So I'm gonna go up and hit that whole area, and then I'm gonna come around on the other side. We're gonna hit it as well, and like I said, I'm gonna do two or three coats like this. And um, if you're thinking, oh man, if whenever I back that with another color or whatever orange is, is going to show, not whenever you back it with black. Uh, whenever you do realistic flames, you're normally going to back it with black. I mean, I've seen it done with other colors. This method here, if you're backing it with black, you have nothing to worry about. Um, as long as you go light and you're just using a translucent or transparent style color. So there, that's with one coat. You can see the orange is kind of laid down in those triangular shapes that I kind of mentioned. So... Uh, and again, I'm going to hit it again uh, just to make sure I, I want to get it. I don't want it too bright. Um, I want it because if, if, if you sat here and probably did, I, I don't know, you know, several, several coats, yeah, it would show up through the black a little bit. You want to get enough on there to where whenever you back the flame details with the white, that it's going to show up with some orange. But you want it light enough to where it's going to be covered with the black backer. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go for these kind of I, somewhat realistic flames, okay? I, I mean, I'm not even ashamed to admit it. I've, I haven't mastered the realistic flames yet. Um, I just like doing them. Um, and the beautiful thing about them is they don't have to be perfect. So I call my flames more of a, uh, I don't know, a wannabe realistic flame. It's like a mix between a hot rod flame and realistic flames because the way I add my tips and uh, detail them sometimes. But... So right there's a couple coats. That's that's more than enough there. Whenever I turn the body sideways, you can see how good that orange is going to show. And um, all that that I don't touch with white is just going to, like I said, disappear in the black backer. So with that said, let's go ahead and grab our uh, stencils. And again, this is that uh, realistic flame stencil set, uh, stencil set that I purchased off of uh, Amazon. And uh, you can, uh, I believe the bag I was showing you had a part number on it or a name. So if you want to get some of these and give it a go yourself too, um, feel free to check it out. Um, I've, I've enjoyed the kit. Um, I have cut a couple of these stencils to uh, go for more of my light, you know, my personal preferences and what I like and, and things of that nature. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that stencil down and then I'm going to go ahead and start doing some outlining with some white. I'm using the ProLine White airbrush paint. And I'm going to take that stencil and I'm just going to go ahead and start some of the uh, some starting points of those realistic flames on the lower portion of that body. The fun part about the realistic flames in my opinion is um you know a lot of people think it is hard and it's it's not it's not easy. And like I said, I'm not ashamed to admit I'm, I'm far from mastering the realistic flame look myself. But it's not as hard as people think it is. And one reason why I say that is you don't have to be perfect. That's the point. Um, realistic flames, one thing that helps me whenever I'm doing them is I will pull up a picture on my phone or on the computer or something. And uh, I'll pull up, you know, you know, real flames, real campfire, something with a black background. And look at it. Just kind of look at how the, 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 the flames have like an open end, a closed end, how they'll swirl, they'll, they crisscross. There's no, it's, it's not perfect. And, and, and it don't have to be realistic flames. And that's what makes it 
what makes it fun. You know, I try whenever I'm doing a hood like this and I'm going on the left side and right side, even though realistic, you know, real flames, they wouldn't be symmetrical, right? I'm still going to try to make them to be a little bit more symmetrical. I just think it looks better if you're doing two sides of the hood and, and, and coming to two different points on the same surface. I think it looks better to try to be somewhat symmetrical. But, the you know, if doing real realistic flames, that don't matter. You know, that's not how real flames work. And um, sometimes, you know, like I said, just practice. Think of it as a every open edge needs a closed edge. And that means using the closed side of the stencil. That means using the open side of the stencil. That means freehanding some stuff. You're going to see that here shortly whenever I'm actually going to do a, a towards the end of uh, airbrushing this. I'm actually going to do a little bit of uh, freehand airbrush work. And um, that's just to, uh, to to close and attach some points. Because whenever you're using the stencils and you're open and closing some of the different flames and things of that nature, you may want to be able to close off a tip or, or open up another flame area but you're not going to be able to connect it because you used a stencil right so sometimes i'll go in there freehand and, and close something off or something like that so so again you can see here i'm trying to be somewhat symmetrical um since we're going to be doing two different points on the hood so i am going to go out and back between the left and right side of the hood trying to get them close i mean they're not going to be perfectly symmetrical they're not going to be an exact replica of one another but they're going to be close and uh, that's just my method. Um, you know, if I was running one big flame across the, the hood and it was going to end on the roof or, or the back end of the car or something like that, you don't have to worry about, you know, symmetrics then, in, in my opinion. Because um, then you, you would come to one point, and however they get there from the left or the right side, it's not going to matter. So, um, but again, um, fast color, um, using these uh, Realistic Flame airbrush stencils. That stencil that you can see that I'm currently holding, that is one that I cut um and there you can kind of start seeing how some of the flames are laying out so you know we got the outer edge you know we kind of got our closed side for the outer edge we've got the lower portion starting and we're just going to start adding a few more little swirls and, and and loops and hooks and um like you can see that i did there and i'm about to do here and, and again open loop closed loop just think of it that way every flame you want to open side and a closed side um, and then you're going to, you know, don't be afraid to crisscross. Don't be afraid to overlap. Don't be afraid to get creative. Um, and if you want to practice this before you try it on one of your own RC bodies, um, something that I did before I ever did my first body with this stuff is I just got a clear piece of Lexan. Um, yeah, I did it on a clear piece of Lexan. A scrap piece of Lexan would be fine. Just practice on it. Uh, and like I said, um, don't be afraid to try it. Practice makes perfect. And, um, and like I said, I'm, I'm no pro at it. I, there's, there's so, sometimes they turn out really good and I love them. Other times they turn out where like, I'm like, okay, yeah, it looks okay. And, and, uh, and you know how it is. Uh, you, everybody is their own heaviest critic. Everybody's their, their biggest judge. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's hardest on themselves. Um, especially whenever it comes to like an RC top deal. So, but I like how this one's coming together, you know, again, a little bit here and there. And the fact that I, that got a little bit more white than orange on that one side because I didn't get as heavy with orange in that area, it don't matter. I like that. Um, I think some orange and white in the flames just naturally looks good. And uh, whenever you look at some realistic flames, you know, you can kind of see the way the lighting effects change and you can have multiple colors. Sometimes I wouldn't lay down all orange either. Sometimes I'd lay down some fluorescent yellow and then I would top the... Uh, upper area where the the flame tips would be sometimes i would do that in fluorescent orange um i've done fluorescent yellow fluorescent orange and red i've done realistic blue flames i've done realistic green frame uh, flames all using like fluorescent blue or fluorescent green again you want it to be if you're using this method there are other methods that you can do um, if i wanted red flames you could go right at it using those stencils and just hitting it with some red paint and then coming back behind it with some white paint. You can do that. But for this method that I'm using where I'm backing it and highlighting it with the white is you would use a translucent, like a fluorescent color, a translucent candy color, um, anything like that. And if you're unsure of this method would work and you want to test it out first, take whatever paint that is, lay it to some um, scratch Lexan, back an area of it with white, and then back another area of it with black, and then you'll be able to see if that color is going to show through the black or not. Um, but generally for my 
experience doing some of these uh, the, the flame work if you use um, fluorescence or candies it's not going to show through on the white so that'll be fine so all right here we go we got some more like uh more openings for the flames again an open and a closed side and going to kind of alternate with that you know that ideal and everything and then we're you're going to see me go back in and do a little bit of clean up do a little bit of freehand stuff and, and things of that nature just to just to get it the way i want it personally um uh, but again i i, I hope uh I hope somebody will find some of this helpful. <laughs> that's what that's what my channel is about: trying to help people, trying to you know show people the uh, you know what we do, show people you know uh, the various forms of RC racing you can do, uh, tips and tricks and setups and and tutorials and help and, and things of that nature. So hopefully somebody's finding this somewhat helpful, and I believe this is like I said the the second time I've done the realistic flames on the channel in a painting tutorial. Um, but, uh, and I guess at the same time, this isn't truly a painting tutorial. It's, it's more showing off that, that project I'm doing for Scott over at RC Terminator and, um, and showing that off and promoting him. Cause like I said, he's a really cool guy, really nice guy. I talked to him several times through Facebook messenger, um, through YouTube, a uh, really cool guy. So, uh, you know, just want to do something and put, and put this spare body I had to good use. And I was like, hey, let's let's do something like this, you know. So uh, hopefully Scott's going to enjoy this and because uh, uh, I surely enjoyed uh, doing it for him. Uh, actually, this is the first body I've, I've painted in a while that's been more of a theme body. I always love doing theme bodies. Uh, it's been one of my favorite uh, things to do. And um, I haven't painted in a while because I used to do it kind of as a side business. But um, I got out of it because I just got tired of it. Um, after you do so many, you just kind of, you, you get burnt out of it quickly. You really do. And then, um, and to be honest with you too, it's, uh, it costs money. You know, I mean, there's a lot of time that goes into these. And, and sometimes people don't value your time as much as you do. And uh, things of that nature, you know. But so I'm really liking how that's turning out. You know, we got a couple of the way the flame tips are going. We got a couple different sides now. We're doing some open sides, some closed sides, things of that. I'm gonna do some crossovers and, and a couple things like that. But I really like how the flames turned out on this truck. And um, and I was going for that kind of like you know you saw the opening um, part of the video too, where the the Terminator skull was coming through the flames from the old intro of the movie. I was wanting to go. That's what inspired the look of this hood. Um, I know it's not an exact recreation of that, but that's what kind of inspired the, the look I was going for on this hood. And the black background on the hood is going to be um, kind of the old school 80s style, like two-tone fade. So I'm going to go in with the black. I'm not going to tape it off. I'm not going to pinstripe it. I'm just going to go in and fog the hood bl uh, black. And then the sides of the cab and the roof of the cab and the doors of the cab and everything's going to be silver. And I'm going to do that to kind of be kind of like, you know, the fire's burning up the hood of the truck. So it's, you know, black from soot and burning and things of that nature when the the main paint job of the truck's actually going to be silver. And uh, you'll understand more about what I'm talking about whenever we get further along in the uh, paint job process here. But um, we don't have too much further girl on these flames. I'm really liking how they're coming out. Um, I feel like I got a couple areas that I'm like unsure of how to... Uh, um, get something added and, and closed to and that's going to be about the time whenever I'm like okay you know here in a little bit I'm going to try to add an, another thing or two here and then we're going to do some free handing but I, I did I really like how that turned out um, like some of those corner tips like right above his shoulders the flame tips there I wasn't too happy with a couple of those and you're going to see I'm going to go back and actually touch that up freehand style um, and, uh, and, and then I like it a lot better whenever we got that done. So that's what you kind of see me doing there, testing it out. Then I'm going to go in and, and do a little bit of freehanding, and you can kind of see where I'm – there we go. There was something that was left open there. I'm going to do that and do a crossover on top of another flame that we had. I'm going to come on over on the other side, and for similar, you know, symmetrical purposes, I'm going to do the same, you know, a similar type thing. I'm going to come in and kind of connect a couple areas. Just running a real fine line, running it out and back a couple times just so that wide will make that fluorescent orange pop real good. Um, I'm going to go in and, and add a couple little uh, white dots here, may add some like hot spots and things like that. But I'm going to go in and, and readjust or, or, or reshade some of the tips and corners like you just see me do on that upper one. 
And then uh, I'm going to come down and put a, a couple little more uh, hot spots right here on the bottom area. Felt like it could have used one more little detail area right there. And again, just spraying, you know, pretty fine and, and taking my time, not getting heavy with it. And uh, just, just going around and just, you know, adding some things. You're, you're going to see where I'm going to go ahead and like twist a couple of the flames too. I think you can actually see that already because I did that on the shoulder. Yeah, there we go. I'm touching that up now. And that's adding like kind of a twisted look to the flame. Again, uh, pull up a picture of real flames and, and um, you know, try to mimic some of that. That's what I do. Uh, and again, I know mine's not exactly 100% realistic. There's still a hot roddy look, um, a hot roddy um, style to my flames, you know. And I'm not, again, I'm not ashamed to admit that. I'm not a pro with these realistic flames, but I have fun doing it. Um, I think it looks neat and, uh, you know, a way to be creative because n out of all the different realistic flame paint jobs that I've done, not a single one of them has come out the same way. They're all a little bit different. And you may go, well, that sounds kind of crazy. You're using a stencil. Yeah, but e each one of them, depending on the way, the shape of the body, the way you got to lay it out, which size stencil, the bigger stencil, smaller stencil, et cetera, et cetera, it'll make them all look different. So um, that, that adds a really cool factor to it, too. So you can see I'm kind of going in and touching up some of those little tips on uh, those flames there and adding some um, some more areas. And so I really like how that turned out. Um, it, it added to it, you know, I felt like I was able to close a couple of the open areas that was left. And if, even if you didn't want to do it freehand, you weren't comfortable with that and you had an open flame or something like that left somewhere that you weren't too fond of. It's not going to matter. You can leave it alone. But I just, I try to connect those points. I tried to make you know, all of it somewhat, you know, un more unique in that, uh, that manner. So, so I'm going to just go in and, and touch some of those areas again. That's, that's just me. That's how I do things. And, you know, uh, is there a right or wrong way to do it? I don't know. I don't think so. Like I said, just practice and play around with opening and closing some of those flames and adding some things and, and get creative. That's the, that's the fun part of it. So again, I was pretty happy with how those turned out, uh, and it's going to look awesome with that black background. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and go in. I'm going to take that um, uh, Proline Black Airbrush Paint, and we're going to fog in that Skynet logo, and then we're going to shade the outer edges of it in the text, and we're going to shade and outline all of the skulls to give it that kind of smoked, edgy look, burnt look, outline look, you know, all that, you know, make it give it some shading and make it pop and things of that nature so um it, it in my opinion it just helps helps make it pop a little bit i'm not going to add it to rc terminator's logo um and the reason being is the main outline of that um i believe is going to be black anyway so um i was just like i'm just going to highlight the skynet text the uh, skynet logo and the skulls give them some shading, uh, go around those outer edges and, and things of that nature, um, paint in the skull head and stuff like that, the skull eyes and the mouths and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's all we're doing here. And then once we're done with this, then we're going to go ahead and hit that hood with the, that uh, Tamiya black paint and, and give it that burnt, singed look on the hood before we bleed into the, the true base coat of the, the body, which is going to be a silver, Tamiya silver. But as you can see here, I'm just kind of going around and, and following the outline of the uh, the skulls, but making sure I'm getting, you know, some of the airbrush on the off side of the, the paint mask because, uh, again, I want it to be shaded in black. Then I'm going to go back in and just hit all the crevices of the paint mask, um, all the eyes and various holes of the skull and things like that. We're going to fill those in with black because we want that to stay shaded and pop um, whenever we get our skull colors and base color down. So... I'm going to turn around and let you see it there so you can see, you know, we got the Skynet logo, the skulls, everything kind of outlined and shaded. Um, so that's going to pop really good whenever we lay down that base coat silver. But uh, I think that's going to look really good. Um, Skynet, um, the, um, you'll see some of the colors coming up here soon. So what I did here, we're getting ready to do the hood. I just pulled off all the rest of the vinyl uh, from the vinyl masking around the Terminator, the T-800 skeleton. So you can see the remnants of that silver, that whole hooded area we're going to paint black, okay? We're back in the Terminator with black again. We're back in the flames. It's already been highlighted in white, black, and we're just going to do the hood. Um, it's, going to, it's going to roll over to the front fender some too, and that's fine. Um, but, okay, so here you go. 
So now you can see we hit the hood black. Those flames are popping real good. Terminator's looking good. We're going to go back and hit those Terminator eyes with some red here in a little bit um, just to get them a little bit of detail to pop some metallic red. Um, but you can see there, I just hit the hooded area, part of the fender, the front bumper, and black. And that's to kind of mimic like the hood was on fire. Again, I didn't pinstripe it. I didn't tape it out. I just fogged it in because I want the black to transition into the silver that we're getting ready to do for the base coat and give it that, that burnt look. So if you got a little bit of overspray black on the roof or on the doors for what we're doing for this theme, that's excellent. That makes it look even better in my opinion, which I did. I got a little bit of uh, uh, black spray on the roof, a little bit on the, the door jams. It's going to look good, you know. So here we go. Now we got the silver base. You can see the outlines of everything better. And you can see how that black kind of transitions into the silver. And it gives it kind of like that, you know, because of the fire coming off the hood and the Terminator that the, the hood's been singed, been burnt. And the, the base coat of the, the, the body is actually a silver color. So uh, I just want to try something a little bit different. Uh, most of my bodies I do, I do, you know, really clean cut, um, uh, pin striping laid out things like that but i want to do this is a terminator body for the one and only youtube terminator uh, rc terminator see we even added a little red dot there for uh, the arnold on the roof um, got added the red to the skull uh, the skeleton on the hood um, and we're going to back that with black but i want to do something a little bit rugged you know because again terminator is a theme here we're doing this for scott the rc terminator cool channel and, you know, a Terminator, it, it is. It's rugged. It's a rugged machine. So I want something to look cool, um, look a little worn, look a little uh, rugged at the same time. You know, a little bit of everything at it. And uh, that's the theme we're going for here. So there you can see it again. We got the red on the Terminator eyes. We got the red on the Skynet door. Um, that turned out really good. And then uh, we already did the, the, the one red glowing eye on the Arnold uh, on the roof of the car. And I, again, I use that Tamiya metallic red. That's one of my favorite reds that they make because um, that color, if you want to go light with it, back it with silver or white or go, you know, two or three co coats with it, you can get different shades of red with a really cool finish depending on what color you back it. So I love it. Now with the skulls, I backed it with blue. Or I didn't back it, excuse me. I highlighted the skulls in blue. Normally, I would have done that in like a coppery color or a brown color or kind of like a dirty yellow color to give the skull some age look. But I realized I was out of those colors uh, for my airbrush paint, so I wasn't able to do that. Um, I've used, uh, I like to use blue as a, a shading color for white a lot. Um, and I said, you know what, that's all I got. Let's do it to skulls. And I like how it turned out. In this instance, I think, I, like, again, I, I normally would have done like a a light brown or something but the blue still gives it some shading gives it that kind of eerie look kind of gives it that like moonlight look because if you go back and watch like the the terminator uh the future war scenes that kind of had that blue um filter on the movie during those scenes so that kind of adds that bluish moonlight to it that eerie look so it worked out um but uh I've got an rc terminator done in the red the skynet logo is gonna uh, the skynet text is gonna remain white and then the uh, the outer edge of the RC Terminator, as you're about to see here, is going to be in black as well. We did it to the hood, so the RC Terminator um, text backing kind of blends into the machine itself. It makes it clean, makes the text pop a little bit more. And on the side here, too, we've got RC Terminator, um, again, Scott's YouTube channel. Uh, got it on the sides. We got our Arnold on the roof, so um, we're pretty much there at this point which we come to my favorite point of painting an rc body and that's pulling off that protective film whenever you're finally done then you get to appreciate all your work um, and you get to see it for what it is because you're going to have some overspray on the film the film kind of makes it look matte you're not going to have the gloss in the areas you want gloss and things like that so getting that film off is where it really you know where it really kind of comes to shine and show show you know and and boy, I, I, like I said, Scott, I hope you like this thing, buddy. I did. Uh, I thought it turned out really cool. Um, I had a fun time doing this for you. And, and again, I appreciate you. I enjoy your channel. I appreciate your channel. And um, I hope you enjoy this body um, as well. And uh, put it to some good use, you know. So um, it, it was laying around for me. This was a body I probably wasn't going to end up using. So I was like, man, let's. what can I do with this thing? And then I, then I instantly thought of you and I thought, how cool would it be to do a theme 
uh, paint scheme just for you, um, RC Terminator. And um, not to mention, I'm a Terminator fan myself, so <laughs> um, I, I was like, this would be a fun body to paint. But uh, yeah, so now uh, that's pretty much all that's left. We got to trim out the rest of the body. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that trimming for you, Scott. Um, get it trimmed out, and then we're going to get that uh, the headlights, uh, headlight bucket and grill mounted. And, um, and Scott, if you decide you want to paint that grill and the headlight buckets, you want to paint them silver or whatever color, you go for it, brother. Um, I just I left them black because I thought it would look cool, you know, with a kind of a rugged body and with a silver and black base. So here you can see we, I went ahead and finished trimming the body out, so it's ready to mount. The only thing Scott's going to have to do is like drill the body post holes, which they're marked on that, that body. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and put those headlight buckets in. Then we're going to slide that front uh, grill in, which slides through the Lexan body and actually into the headlight bucket. And then what you're going to do from here is just take a couple screws and screw it to the inside of there. There was some areas where you could screw into the side of the headlights um, on the outside of the body, but I didn't want to add any more unnecessary screws. Um, the, uh, the design of this bucket system actually worked out really good. Um, it didn't really leave much of a gap, so I wasn't going to secure it that way. I don't want to put any more holes in a body than I have to. But uh, you can kind of see there's the hole for like the headlight that you would fit in and, and things of that nature. So pre pretty cool. I, I thought it turned out really neat. Um, and again, I really enjoyed doing this body. Um, I had a blast with it. And uh, we kind of get <laughs> I was playing around uh, with, a, with a new little, uh, little uh, rotating display I got. So um, the body being off balance, I had to get creative with a couple of things to stack in the middle, but I want to show it off um, all the way around one last time. And again, Scott, I appreciate you, buddy. Um, I hope you enjoy this uh, RC Terminator body. I, I hope to see it on your channel on one of your next crawling videos in the future. Um, whenever you want to run a honcho body again, I'd, I'd love to see you put it to good use as well. But I do appreciate you, buddy, and I hope you enjoy it. Well guys, hope you enjoyed that paint tutorial. And again, Scott over at RC Terminator, I hope you enjoy the body, hope you put it to good use, and I hope to see you crawling with it uh, on your channel in the future. Uh, and again, guys, just one more time too, if you've seen anything in this painting tutorial video, something maybe I didn't elaborate enough on, or something I didn't cover, or something specific you would like to see RC body painting wise, hit me up in the comment section below. Um, I'll do a video on that in the future. Uh, that's what my channel is here to do, to promote what we do with the RC racing, different sides of competitive RC, uh, you know, tutorials, setup tuning guides. I'm here to help that newer racer trying to get started. I'm here to entertain other guys that enjoy the RC world as much as I do. So hit me up in the comment section. I try to follow up whenever people give me suggestions. Uh, try to follow up and come through with that as well. But uh, again, shout out. Please go check out uh, Scott's uh, YouTube channel, RC Terminator. Uh, shout out to him. I uh, appreciate you again, buddy. Hope you enjoy it. Keep an eye on the channel uh, and some upcoming episodes. I got some more shout outs coming for some more RC related YouTube channels um, that I'd like to give a shout out to. Um, I've gotten to know some of these people. I've met them in person. I've either talked to them on Facebook, talked to them through YouTube um, a few different ways. So I got some more channel promotion that I'm going to be doing for some other RC channels as well. Give you guys an opportunity. Uh, you know, to get some more RC uh, input from other areas and other channels as well. So plenty more uh, shout outs coming in the near future too. But again, guys, I greatly appreciate each and every single one of you. Got some more racing episodes coming your way. Got some rubber tire gluing tutorials coming your way. And I've got a RC no prep drag racing unboxing and review coming your way as well. That's gonna be followed with some out of the box racing, some follow up reviews and things of that nature. Got a lot planned, got a lot going on, so make sure you stay tuned. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll catch you guys next time.